Hey YouTube, it's Jeff at Dark Moon Metals. In today's video I have something that I've never really had across my bench before. It's going to be a very interesting repair and I wanted to take the opportunity to share it with you. Um, I want to also address uh, two questions that I've had on my channel recently. One was, why is it you seem to have a burst of five videos and then nothing for a month or two? Uh, very simple answer is, I get work in that is 90% repetitive. It's the same process over and over and over again, and I don't want to flood my channel with the same content over and over again. I, I want to kind of keep things fresh. Um, so it's not that I broke up with YouTube and I'm leaving you. It's the simple thing that I just don't want to bore you with content that you've already seen. Um, it's kind of like the movie Highlander. There should have been only one. Uh, and that's how I look at my videos. Every once in a while I'll have a sequel, but I try to have new information and it's something that's completely different to keep things interesting. Uh, the second question that this project is a really, really good opportunity to answer is what does it take to be a welder? Well, it depends on what kind of welding you want to do. The term welder is kind of like lawyer, and I know it's apples and oranges, but you'll see the comparison in a second. When you're a welder, uh, you will probably specialize in something. For me, my thing is I love TIG welding cast iron. And I've had cast iron parts come as far away from Arizona for me to weld because people are very confident in what I do and I'm comfortable doing it. Um, I know people out there that if I hand them a, a stick welder and they weld a trailer hitch on a trailer, I wouldn't tow it behind my truck, but you put a TIG torch in their hands and I would trust them to weld the wing back on an airplane and I'd fly to Bermuda in it. So everybody has their own kind of specialty. Kind of like lawyers. You have lawyers that specialize in constitutional law, um, injury law. You have lawyers that specialize in divorce. You have, um, you know, uh, bankruptcy lawyers. You have uh, estate planning lawyers. Everybody has their own niche. So. Really, to become a welder is to take something you're interested in and be willing to learn about it and practice it. That's it. So that being said, let me jump into today's project and show you what we're up against. Okay, folks, this is our project for today. Now, before you think that this is some kind of a steampunk interpretation of the lamp from a Christmas story, uh, no, this is actually a medical device. Um, a little bit of background about the person who wears this. She has been a friend of mine for years. In fact, she has been kind of behind the scenes with Dark Moon Metals. She's helped out a lot with different things. And uh, she had a condition where when she was younger, uh, one leg stopped growing for a period of, a, I think it was a couple of years. Uh, and it was when she was young, so when her, it was when she was growing the most. I'm not gonna get into all the medical stuff because I really don't know a lot about it. But to make a long story short, one leg is seven inches to eight inches shorter than the other. Um, this brace was developed over a number of years. This is actually uh, one of many incarnations of this particular uh, device to help her walk and be mobile. And um, it had a severe structural failure at one of the weld points, which is why it's in my shop I'm going to repair it. Uh, if I couldn't fix it, it would be one of those deals where with all the paperwork and, and the need to make a new one, she might not be able to have access to something like this, which helps her get around a lot for a couple of months. So um, I spoke to her doctor and got a little bit of information about how it was put together, who put it together, the materials that were involved, and we are going to go ahead and we are going to weld it here. And uh, I'm going to actually use a technique called fish plating in a couple of spots, and I'll explain what that is in the video. But uh, let me give you a close-up look so you can see exactly where uh, the repair needs to take place and uh, how we're going to go about doing that. All right, here's a close-up look at the bottom of the brace. Um, this is where her foot would come to rest, and this is the lift necessary to kind of even her out while she's walking. Um, the way that this was put together, uh, it's all stainless steel, looks like quality stuff. Uh, there is a weld bead that goes from one end to the other. Um, there are some rivet looking things in here. I'm not even sure what the heck they are, but you can see this part right here on the bottom is what broke. It completely cracked. Now, um, one of the things that I realized when I first looked at this, and let me see if I could zoom in on it and get enough light in there where you can see. Let's see. 
that's where the break took place and up here in the top corner it looks like it's very granular it looks like uh, it almost looks like crystals and that could be a telltale sign that someone welded this and then quenched it which means that if this hardened it's extremely hard but it could be brittle and this is an impact point um, every step she takes creates an impact so that might be why this particular piece failed um, the actual failure itself if I can squeeze in here with the camera did not occur on the weld joint it's the material so that might have something to do with what's known as the heat affected zone and if you don't know what that is uh, just look up my other video with that title and it'll explain a little bit about it before I start moving into the repair itself I want to explain what fish plating is and why I have elected to use it here now this is all stainless um, the weld did not break the material itself broke which like I said leads me to believe that this may have somehow been hardened through heat um, it wasn't cooled properly which you know looking at it this side is pretty much an exact opposite of that so what happened there could potentially happen here uh, fish plating is where let's say I want to join these two pieces of material together uh, and this is going to be a very basic uh, definition of what fish plating is and what it can be used for I want to put these two pieces of metal together and I'm going to do a butt joint so I make my weld bead but for some reason I'm not confident that this weld is going to be sufficient enough or strong enough for the load that it's required to bear so what you would do is grind down your weld so you would make it flush with your parent metal come in with another plate put it right on top and then weld all the way around that is your fish plate it is a very very good type of reinforcement some people will go as far as milling in slots and welding on the inside of this as well so what I'm gonna do <clears throat> is take a piece of stainless steel and I'm gonna bend it to match this contour once the welding has taken place I'm gonna go in and put the fish plate on and weld all the way around with the TIG uh, I'm gonna use stainless steel wire 100% argon and a stainless steel uh, fish plate so everything should be okay I'm also going to weld this side not because I think it's gonna break but if there was a problem where the metal was cooled too quickly and it became brittle and that's why this broke well, whoops knocking stuff over on my bench here um, I don't have um, faith that this one is going to hold you know that it's already proven that it can break so I'm going to go ahead and fish plate this one as well while it's in the shop um, just for my peace of mind for her peace of mind and what's nice about this is if for some reason this hardened I'm hoping that perhaps through the welding process it might anneal I'll let it cool properly so I'm just going to remove the rubber um, tread plate here and uh, we're going to start welding I managed to get the rubber pad off uh, that was some seriously good adhesive that they used um, I did call the doctor when, when I spoke to him about the particular brace I did ask him what he used because I want to use the same kind of cement and uh, he told me what he used and where to get it so uh, that'll go back on pretty good uh, you can see that I've got the crack lined up and I've got it compressed together with a bungee cord for now and what I'm going to do I'm going to use that crack to make sure that everything is sitting where it was before it broke and what I'm going to do is come up here and I'm going to run a bead of weld in this seam uh, I'm not going to touch the back of the crack at all I can't get under it because it's beneath the plate normally what I would do is bevel one side of the crack weld it bevel the other side and then weld it to make sure I get full penetration I just can't do it in this case so I'm going to run a weld bead here first then I'm going to come in bevel that and then run another bead then I'll move on to the fish plating well folks I'm ready to go I've got my TIG set up at 180 amps I'm going to control most of the heat through the foot pedal itself uh, I've got an ER it's like a 316L 330 seconds rod 
and uh, I'm really curious to see how this metal is going to move. I know it's some type of stainless steel, don't know exactly what it is. And this is the weld that I'm most nervous about simply because I don't have material to practice on. Um, there is none of this just laying around scrap where I could run a couple beads and get a feel for it. So we'll see what happens when the metal starts to flow. So I'm not going to be able to show you this part doing the bevel itself. Uh, I have to come in at kind of an odd angle and I'm really restricted in my work area here as far as space. But all I'm using is a regular cutoff disc and uh, I'm going to go in, cut the crack out of it, make as much of a bevel as I can and then go in and weld it with the uh, stainless steel TIG. I'm lined up and ready for my next weld. Uh, I did change the configuration of my torch a little bit. I went from a number 8 cup to a number 4 cup and uh, I put a stubby cap on just because it's a lot easier to get in here uh, without the regular cap uh, sticking out the back there. Still using my 330 seconds rod. Uh, this metal moves really nice so I did turn the heat down to about 160 amps. I should be able to get everything I need out of the pedal with that. Um, so here it goes, second pass to fill in that bevel. Kind of awkward to get into, but once I'm there, it should run good. Now that all the initial welding is done and everything is back where it should be, I'm going to think about my strapping material. Now what I'm going to use as a fish plate isn't going to be as thick as the original material. There's no reason to do that. It's overkill. It's stainless steel. And um, I'm going to be using something that's about 75 thou. Uh, stainless steel is really strong stuff and uh, it should be more than enough to reinforce the joint. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my vernier caliper and I'm just going to come in here real quick and get the rough width of that piece and I'm just going to transfer it to my stainless here and I should be able to get both straps out of this so I'm going to go off camera cut this and then get ready to fit it in place and weld it. Fish plates in ready to weld uh, I'm not going to film this part of the process. You already can tell just by what you've seen so far that my ARC footage is some of the worst on the internet. Thank you very much. That comes from low budget photography and filming by myself. So uh, I am going to go ahead and weld this out and uh, we'll take a look when I'm done. Okay YouTube, time for a progress update. I've got the fish plates welded in on both sides. That's it for the welding. Next thing I'm going to have to do is to sandblast this bottom piece. I might sandblast the whole thing. Sometimes sandblasting helps relieve some stresses in the material. Uh, then I'm going to clean this surface with acetone, glue the rubber pad back on, and she should be good to go. Uh, I've already got it wrapped up in an industrial trash bag, so no sand or grit will get into the areas that touch your skin. So uh, it's off to the blast cabinet. So I'll see you as soon as that's done. Well, let's take a look. Well, the adhesive is finished curing. I cleaned up any of the uh, the squeeze out from the adhesive coming in between the steel and the rubber. There was quite a bit, but um, I know that it's definitely on there. Not going to worry about that coming off anytime soon. All right. There's nothing left but to have her try it on. So here we are in the living room, YouTube, and uh, the brace is back in service. This is my friend Katie. Hey! And uh, so I guess it feels good to be walking around again. Yes! Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> well, it was definitely an interesting job, and it kept me on my toes.
But anyway, um, I'm glad that it was able to, uh, to be repaired and it didn't take you a couple months to get another one. But, uh, so guys, you can see, welding sometimes isn't all that spectacular, all that glamorous, you're not going to make a million dollars at it, but uh, when you have the skills that people need in a pinch, they're definitely going to call on you. So, best advice I can give you, like I said in the beginning of the video, start welding. Find something you're interested in, focus on it, practice, become good at it. But, um, with that being said, uh, I'm thinking I'm going to wrap up the video here. Thank you for hanging out with us this long, and uh, we'll see you again on the next one. This is Jeff at Darkwood Middles. I'll see you again soon. And this is Katie saying bye.